Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dehre Bagga and today I'll be playing the 5 minute blitz on Lee Chess and during the game I'll try to be as instructive as possible like always, making sure that there's something to be taken away as a learning that helps you improve your game to the next level. Now before we start off with the game, I request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily without a miss. So yeah, let's start off with the game quickly and see how it goes. Which pieces we get. We got the black pieces. I'll play the card card defense, which starts with c6. And go for d5. Here the main move is to play the advanced variation. That's what the open does. So we can play bishop f5. Then up the pawn on e6 there. And after playing a6, I'll now try to go for the center break. Or I can develop my knight first. Uh, both are completely fine. Let's go with knight development. And now pawn to c5. Uh, we can let this tension be as it is, or we can take. So let's let's be there only, and let's try and uh, develop our pieces better. So, uh, or let's go with the pawn here. Uh, rook to c8 to start with. The idea is to always take control of the file which you are going to open up. So yeah, let's do it. He takes. Now we can attack over here uh, with my bishop, probably, or I can go with the rook as well, attacking the bishop of the opponent. But then he will probably exchange bishops, and my rook would be hanging uh, eventually. So not a great idea. Let's go on with the knight, probably. Knight here and then here. If bishop comes and pins the knight, then we can kick it. Yep, that's what happens. So we'll kick the bishop back. If he goes on to h4, I'm okay proceeding with the pawns because we haven't castled yet. If I have castled already, then I will probably not push the pawns forward. But here, since I see the opportunity, then definitely go for it. And then I can now just read out my knight better, probably. Uh, or can play pawn forward, but that's that's too much pushing your pawns forward. So not required. Okay, or I can fear and get on my bishop as well. Those are two ideas. But if there's some break, I want my bishop to be active. So just developing the knight for now. Opening up the queen's diagonal as well. Okay. Uh, can we... Let me push the pawn forward now. Probably yes. Can't take on the pawn on g5 because we have a queen defending it. Uh, he goes for the aggressive move there. Uh, I can proceed with the pawn is one idea. Or I can take. Let's take. Because after he takes with the bishop, he will lose a piece. We're going to have a knight as well defending it. He sees that later. Can I push the pawn forward? Asking him to push forward. That's one tactic there. I think I, can, I should go with this. Now if he plays pawn way ahead, then it's problematic. So he doesn't. Um, now, how do we break him open? Because at least we have put his bishop to inactivity. So let's go on with the other knight, the active knight. This is controlling the right diagonal. We are controlling important squares. Um, this can probably lead to a peace loss, I, I would say, because bishop on c2 is guarded i'm attacking the queen and the knight and the opponent resigns and no wonder and oh there's a long history between us three one now he had won the first one and lost a couple of them afterwards and again he has been defeated now so i i just keep winning against this opponent uh, and it was 18 moves pretty smooth let's analyze the game from computer perspective as well if he did something wrong Probably not. Yes, that was completely winning, as we see. So yeah, Karukan defense always helps. Starts with uh, c6 there. Uh, opponent had played e4. I respond with c6 and followed by the opponent plays d4. I go for the center now with d5. And he plays the advanced variation, which is the most challenging. But uh, he didn't find the right moves there. Because after bishop to f5, generally what we see from uh, white is to exchange this light square bishop. Or uh, the computer preferred move is uh, knight to d2. 
And if a bishop over here trying to exchange, the best move for black is to exchange the bishop because uh, the light square bishop is an important piece uh, for white. Whereas uh, for for dark, for black pieces, dark square bishop is more important uh, because it comes more effectively into play. And here, if uh, he takes, uh, it's advantage for him. Uh, so rather, uh, sorry, it's not a good option for him to take. So we can take, or I can just bring it back. I prefer bringing it back so that if if now the opponent tries to take, I can take back with the edge pawn. And here, the most uh, preferred move by the computer and very challenging one as well is pawn to e6. That's very strange move, as you see as well. Uh, you generally don't expand your pawns too much in the opening, as you see. Uh, but that has some serious advantage because now I can, of course, take. If I take, the opponent also takes with the bishop. After I take, the queen is going to come in very quickly uh, and then attack the pawn on e6 as well as the pawn on g6. And my king will be in a lot of trouble. And before I castle, uh, it will be too late, actually. So already, if you see, after I take, uh, and if queen comes on to g4, this is completely losing already. It's like two down, and probably there's no way back. You can't defend both the pawns here. There's no other move apart from putting your king on uh, f7, which is weird as well. Uh, king will not be able to do anything from there on. Uh, that's what we are seeing the best, uh, the most uh, used move, king to f7. But in most cases, as you see, white is winning. Uh, it's hardly where black has won knight to a6 is winning once. And that's also very rare. But as you see, most of the games have been won by white after whatever move you choose. Uh, so there's there's no uh, probably no game uh, which I would say that can be a comeback one we see in the grandmaster level which was uh preferred and 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 he still got to win this i probably cover this one in the later part of one of the one of my videos later uh so let's get back to game if that would have happened that would have been disaster but he doesn't uh, and i play bishop to e, uh, pawn to e6 solidifying my center he develops uh he plays a3 which is passive because you are generally looking forward to advance your bishops uh getting them to write active squares and even the knight and castle probably to king to the safety. But rather open played uh, a3 there. His idea is that he doesn't want my bishop to be allowed to be played to b4, eyeing the king or doing some pins. But that's not a problem because you get a chance to play uh, c3 if I try to bring my bishop. Uh, and that opens up the queen's diagonal as well. So that's always helpful and solidifies your pawn chain too. So you don't need to play a3 here. So that was a passive move. And after bishop to e2, I respond with knight d7. Uh, just trying to make use of my knight as well, getting into active. Operant castles, so pretty fine this here. I go for the pawn break now with c5. Operant defense by playing c3 there. And yeah, I thought here for a few seconds and probably played the best move, I guess. Yes, rook to c8 is the best. Uh, because um, the whole point of playing uh, c5 was that you will uh, break open the pawn chain uh, as whenever you get a chance. And take now rook to c8 means that you will be controlling the open file. That's what is most important. Um, and that's what happens in the game. Opponent here played b4. I thought that was weakening for sure because now I get to take on the center. He takes back and c5 gets opened up and his pieces are not developed as you see. Uh, on the queen side, he has opened up the file as well, where my bishop is also already eyeing. So that was always the threat, as I mentioned in the game as well. Here uh, in the game, when we go back, I played knight to e7. Uh, opponent plays bishop g5, trying to pin pin the knight over there, but probably of no use because after h6, the opponent has to retrieve. And if it uh, retrieves uh, on h4, which happens in the game, that is a bad move. That gives me more space to proceed with, and that's what I do. I played g5. Now, generally expanding the pawns uh, on your king side after you castle is a bad stuff. But since I haven't castled in the game, and probably it won't be required looking at the position as you see, king is pretty much safe in the center. That's the whole purpose. My rook is active on the c file. That's also one purpose of uh, castling that you want to get your rooks active. Uh, as you see, my knights are in the center, so they can probably create some activity. And I have pushed my opponent's bishop to an inactive square, which is g3. And it's probably eyeing just 
his own pawn, nothing beyond that. So that's how you control uh, the system and make sure that opponent's pieces are on inactive squares and yours are on actives. Uh, that's what happens in the game. He goes to a G3 there. Again, I have a few more options here. I went with a uh, knight to G6 first, trying to get my pieces towards the king. Again, one more option which you should always consider. You can't attack with just a couple of pieces uh, towards the king side, but have some more activity towards it. Here, the opponent plays knight to D2. Again, uh, not a very good option, as I say. Uh, just developing the knight, but you have to look at the attack as well, what's happening on your side. So he doesn't look bother to check that and I play h5, uh, trying to play h4 next if he's not careful. Here the opponent plays, uh, um, he plays h4 himself and probably should not because he should just make sure that he plays uh, the h3 there so that my bishop is also not threatening some any attacks over there uh, and he can also, also retrieve his bishop back but offers me a free pawn there because after I take, he cannot, of course, take back because he loses the piece in the process of exchanging. And this will be deadly. This this should not be able... He can't control this from here. The attack is pretty pretty hard from here, as you see, uh, after some moves. Uh, even if we follow the best moves for white, that's not winning and that's not going to help. Yes, you can attack the queen as much as you want, but... You can't press the queen down, uh, and g5, g3 will all, also be of not much use because after you come back, you are willing to play pawn forward and look for some break. Uh, you have a bishop as well, which will quickly come to e7 and attack on the h4. You have a knight ready to be uh, navigated through as soon as possible whenever you get some exchange over here, and you are pretty safe. Of course, this pawn is not a problem at all because. Uh, Rook to G, uh, G8 will pin the spawn as well, and you cannot move your king as well. And as you see, the knight is more inactive, rook is inactive, uh, the other rook never came into the picture. So that's that's bad way of playing. So always be careful when what opponent is doing rather than just playing your stuff. And I took on the pawn there, and he goes back, and I push the pawn forward. That's more important to continue attacking and make opponent think. Uh, one advantage more by pushing this pawn forward is, of course, the opponent will not take because that opens up the G, the G file as well. And as I said, rook can come on the G file, attack the king. So op opponent cannot afford to play, uh, to take the pawn, but has to move forward. And as soon as he does, that, that pushes more pressure towards him because now he has made one more piece inactive. This bishop will be inactive throughout the game. And as you see, all my pieces are pretty much active, though the bishop hasn't been developed yet. But uh, it's, it's controlling some pawns. Uh, it, it can just, it takes one move. The diagonals are pretty clear. No pawn chain is blocking my bishop. That's important. And the pawn chain, which could have blocked my bishop, which was the light square bishop, was developed before the before creating this pawn chain. So the ideas were pretty clear from the beginning, as you see. Uh, and the rook is, of course, uh, behind the pawn and can come to g8 and then attack and pin the, knight, pin the king as well. Uh, so pretty pretty good position as you see. That's why computer saying two point one in favor of white, uh, in favor of black. Sorry, and probably I'm just a pawn up, but in position wise, I'm pretty much uh, ahead of the opponent. And here uh, I played a uh, knight to b six. My idea was just to read out my knight. Uh, I didn't want to continue with bishop to uh, c two because uh, yes, I can go there, but then queen moves away. Uh, I'm not doing much with my bishop, so I didn't want to do that. Uh, but rather develop my knight, which was still uh, kind of, uh, I would say, uh, less developed. And I can probably find a good square for my knight as well, uh, exchange some stuff, because here his, he has uh, one inactive piece, which uh, I can take advantage of throughout the game. I am playing with extra pieces, even if it's like not having a bishop with you. So you are ahead already. And now my opponent plays uh, the final blunder, which was knight to b3. Of course. Uh, and that what what caused that because he cannot move this knight going back uh, to uh, to e1 is probably very very rare people will consider this that's a computer move definitely you will never think of going back to e1 uh, generally you will look going forward towards the opponent and if you see this knight is not going anywhere apart from the, that e1 which is rare as I said uh, also his bishop isn't doing much he cannot go on to uh, d3 as well 
and all these squares are pretty much guarded. So the bishop is inactive as well. And the knight is also stopping bishop from going anywhere. Anyways, this was again blocked. So the control of this game is, is tremendous. Uh, the opponent doesn't have any uh, valid moves. You are controlling um, the whole c file as well. Uh, the, the bishop is controlling uh, b1 as well. So where does the queen or any piece go? That's the whole point. So in that process, uh, he just tries to free up uh, the squares for queen so that queen can have some activity maybe. Uh, but that that is a fine blunder because, of course, you have to see that as well. Uh, because you had played the bishop early and open up the c file and put your rook on the c file, you had this good square, which is uh, bishop to c2, which actually forks both the pieces. And there's no way that both can be saved because to save this, uh, a bishop fork, you have to... Uh, come over here or here. That's the only two places to save both the pieces and both are being attacked with the bishop. So you cannot do anything about it and the opponent resigns. So that's how you should create your game, I would say. Uh, understand and make your opponent's pieces inactive. Make sure that yours are active. As I said, taking this bishop out of the pawn chain before creating it was very important. That's what happens. And you have put the opponent's bishop uh, on an inactive square where the opponent bishop is as equal as not being on the board. So even if he wouldn't have blundered, there's no way I, I see him uh, getting a good uh, counterattack from here. So that was completely dominating. I hope you like the video. Do let me know your feedback. I hope this helps you improve your game to the next level. As I said in the beginning as well, the whole motive behind creating these videos is to help you improve. Um, and even I improve uh, by playing and probably explaining as well. So yeah, and that helps everyone. Uh, I hope if you and if you like the video, do do like it on YouTube as well. Do comment. Uh, let me know which openings you want me to cover because I generally am a player who plays London System and Karo Khan, uh, and these two are my favorite opening. London from white and black. When I'm playing from black, I play as Karo Khan defense. So uh, I like both of them. Both are pretty much working out for me. I've been improving throughout uh, the last few months and uh, day 100 is on the way uh, of chess yard being there. So on Monday, I'll be completing 100 days of chess yard, one video daily without a miss. So yeah, keep pushing me going forward. Let me just focus on my game and help everyone as always. So thank you so much for your time. Um, take care. Bye-bye.